So in this video, I'm going to share with you why I ultimately chose to upgrade from my 2019 Intel Mac Pro to the new Mac Studio M3 Ultra. So there were actually three choices. Uh, one, well, upgrade to the Mac Studio. But the second choice would have actually been to upgrade to the new M4 Max MacBook Pro, which I'll get to uh, in just a bit later. But third and lastly, well, just don't upgrade at all. I could just roll with my current 2019 Intel Mac Pro and that would be just fine. And for a long time, it made sense not to upgrade, well, until it didn't. Uh, so let's take a look at my current Mac Pro rig first. This faithful beast has been the heart of my home studio for about five years and it's been solid. At the time of purchase, it was the most powerful Mac you could buy. Uh, I knew better not to max it out though and chose sort of a middle of the road configuration. And with my universal audio interfaces, I still had plenty of horsepower to run a lot of real-time plugins that I needed. And I've got outboard gear as well, so getting great sounds into my Mac Pro wasn't much of an issue mostly. Still, it was showing some age, specifically when it came to video editing. Since this was also my video editing machine, I found that certain effects like camera stabilization were just taking way too long, long enough to really disrupt my workflow. Also, while it processed Apple-friendly footages like ProRes pretty well, it did not handle some of the newer non-Apple-friendly video compressions for my Sony and Canon cameras. To the point where sometimes with multicam footage, stuttering just made it extremely frustrating, especially on high-frame B-roll footages, which I shoot all the time now. If you want to know more about video compression and how it affects your video editing workflow, I'll link some resources below. Finally, my workflow changed over the years where I was using a lot more virtual instruments in my sessions. I was finding that I had to freeze a whole bunch of them in order for me to overdub, otherwise the latency was just comically bad. Uh, it was impossible to overdub anything. Another problem with the Mac Pro is the amount of heat it generates. Now, the computer itself stays very cool. It's very quiet. Uh, it's really well designed. It's this solid piece of uh, CNC aluminum, but that heat that it dissipates, it's got to go somewhere. And if you feel the back of this machine went under load, it pumps out a lot of heat and that has to go somewhere. It'll go into this room. I am possibly considering like a ductless HVAC just for this room, but it's disruptive, it's expensive, it's just an ongoing issue. So anything to reduce heat is kind of a win. Now, let me be really clear though, all these issues, video stuttering, latency with virtual instruments and the heat, I mean, there are workarounds for all of these. In fact, you'd be mistaken if somehow getting a new piece of gear would make these issues go away. I was just reading on Reddit the other day about some producer who had just got a Mac Studio Ultra and was thinking that the new Ultra can just eat through anything. But as it turns out, the Mac Studio doesn't have unlimited power and there are limitations still. Specifically, the new Mac was still struggling with some older sessions on Pro Tools. Uh, what gives? Well, it turns out that it was actually some sub-optimized older plugin that was causing huge CPU spikes. So if that specific plugin is something that you have to have, no amount of new computer gear is going to solve poorly optimized software. It wasn't that the Mac Pro wasn't working for me, but like I mentioned, it was a combination of a lot of little things that got me to slowly think over almost a year, okay, if the opportunity does arise, I may consider upgrading. I did feel like I got my money's worth out of this Mac Pro and it was a fair transaction, the amount of computing I got out of it, but I wouldn't say I got more than what I paid for. So it's bittersweet, uh, but you know, what are you gonna do? Coming to terms with this Intel Mac Pro was hard, but now that I decided it was time to move on, I really had to think and decide what to move on to. For a while, uh, there was nothing Apple put out that made me want to pull the trigger and upgrade until the Mac Pro M2 Ultra showed up. When I saw this new Mac Pro though, I was almost relieved because of how bad the value proposition for this machine was. Now I don't have to upgrade to the new first M chip Mac Pro. And it was universally panned by most reviewers and users anyway. The way they priced this thing just didn't make any sense, especially compared to this new Mac called the Mac Studio. By the way, I really dislike the Mac Studio exterior design from just the way it looked, which I admit is a little shallow. My first thought was that the Mac Studio just looked goofy and clumsy and just at best super boring. Now I've seen some posts online about how the Mac Studio is actually a spiritual successor to the original Mac Pro, the trash can edition. 
Um, I think there's some truth to that. I think Apple's pursuit of ultimate performance in the smallest amount of footprint, I think they might have succeeded with the Mac Studio. Having said that though, it feels uh, like it's a bit of a bummer that some of the physical attributes of this Mac Pro didn't carry over to the Mac Studio. I think any object that occupies physical space, it's okay for you to spend a little resource uh, giving its identity uh, a design language that tells you what it's doing on the inside. Uh, there's a little bit of a hint on the outside and I think that's elegant, I think that's artistic, uh, but you know, that's just my two cents. I mean, I'm not asking it for it to look like a sculpture, but come on, it's about as exciting as a vacuum. Like, can we put some more effort into this five, $10,000 machine? I've owned every generation of Mac Pros, including the, the trash can Mac Pro. I just feel like Apple could have done a little something extra externally. So while the Mac Pro 2 Ultra was pretty terrible, the Mac Studio M2 Ultra, now despite its disappointing industrial design, was quite promising. I guess this is a big departure from the days of Sir Johnny Ives' tenure, but the Mac Studio uh, stayed with me in my mind space. And I do know a lot of folks who jumped on that Mac Studio Ultra bandwagon and they rave about it. But then Apple recently came out with this new MacBook Pro with the M4 Max chip. Now, this was getting interesting. This new MacBook Pro is like a beast. So I seriously considered doing the whole MacBook Pro like docking thing uh, that some home studio folks are really into. And it was really tempting, but it would be a huge change in my workflow and my entire home studio configuration. So here's a list of advantages that the MacBook Pro M4 Max can bring. One, it's portable. So this type of like MacBook Pro docking studio workflow is something that I've seen a lot and it looks really appealing. You could be working outside at a coffee shop, then bring it home to uh, do some work with your outboard gear at your home studio, or take the MacBook Pro to another studio and mix it there. It's very cool, it's very social. Two, it's undoubtedly an incredible chip, the most powerful CPU per watt usage on the market as I understand it. And with such performance, uh, the MacBook Pro would be useful and relevant for many, many years. But there were still a few things that did nag me. Uh, for one, like thermals and thermal throttling. I know that these MacBook Pros are really well designed and is very efficient, but under extreme load, I think it can still get pretty hot and it can kick the fans. And I'm almost certain that I'll be running my machine to the max, doing multicam 4K, 6K video editing, and long sustained single core and multi-core intensive work. Finally, the lack of ports. Three Thunderbolt ports just doesn't seem quite enough and there would have to be an insane amount of daisy chaining. Like some ports I want it dedicated like my three UAD interfaces, which requires a lot of bandwidth. Uh, the MacBook Pro doesn't have a dedicated network port, so it's just more and more daisy chaining. Realistically, as much as I love the portable studio on the go, and it sounds amazing for inspiration and collaboration, uh, I'm just I'm just too scared to be lugging around my main rig from place to place. So with that said, if I wanted to upgrade now, the M3 Ultra Mac Studio would be it. By far, this seems like the perfect choice for now, whether Apple makes an M4 or an M5 Ultra is anyone's guess. But to me, the M3 Ultra seemed like a nice jumping on point. Okay, so the most ideal location in terms of ergonomics would be to have the Mac Studio situated right on top of this rack mount. I would have easy access to the SD card port as well as the front Thunderbolt uh, 5 ports there, as well as just being able to kind of like put shuttle drives uh, back and forth. Just a, a great uh, slick location. Now, the bad news, unfortunately, would be the cable management. So the Mac Pro is right here, and all the cabling that goes into this machine would have to be extended up to the Mac Studio. Now, that's just a couple of feet, but that's no trivial matter, as you may know, right? Uh, cables like Thunderbolt 5, extending it just a few feet, say from like a six to a, a eight or a 10 feet, could set you back a few hundred dollars. Not to mention all of the USB hub daisy chaining and uh, cabling and custom audio cables that would have to be rerouted. I mean, the one way I could avoid it is by just having the Mac Studio be set right back here. That way all the cabling is a, a pretty easy uh, swap. The bad thing, of course, is that it's not as accessible and it's not ergonomic, so it's not ideal either. So I'm gonna have to decide uh, what to do here. The M4 Max chip, as I understand it, lacks the architecture to make it into an Ultra, 
So the earliest new chip would be the M5 Ultra, and that looks like it's still years away. Also, the Mac Studio M3 Ultra boosts improved thermal design with like heftier heat sinks than its previous or some of the base models, making it super ideal for working constantly under load. And finally, with the seven Thunderbolt 5 ports and a dedicated 10 gigabit network port, uh, it's got plenty for me to grow into in the future. So this is my final Mac Studio configuration. Uh, it's right now just sitting over there as I decide on what plugins and software I want to load in. Uh, I want to be really intentional about what I load up on this new machine because the current Mac Pro is just way too many audio plugins and fringe apps that I rarely use. Uh, it's turned into this software hoarders machine and I'm breaking that cycle with this new Mac Studio. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next video.